This is the second part of the lecture on Module 8 from the Apology of Science book. In the first part, we talked about how the uniformitarianist looks at the geological record and explains how those layers of rock were laid down. In this part, we're going to look at how the uniformitarianist explains the fossil record. In explaining the fossil record, the uniformitarian uses index fossils. These are fossils that are assumed to represent a certain period in the Earth's past. What you need to remember and write down is that index fossils are used by geologists to determine what time period a layer of rock represents. For example, trilobites, those little creatures that we talked about in the last module, those are assumed to have existed from about 240 to 570 million years ago. So let's look at a timeline here. We Let's go from the start of time up to the present day. According to the Uniformitarian, the trilobite existed from about 240 million years ago until about 570 million years ago. So during that time is when they believe that trilobites lived and existed on the Earth. Therefore, when a paleontologist or a geontologist finds a trilobite in a layer of rock, he or she assumes that that layer of rock where that trilobite fossil was found represents this time period of 240 to 570 million years ago. Now, I just want to clarify here that these index fossils are of a creature that is extinct and only live for a certain period of the Earth's past. If the creature is not extinct, it simply cannot be used as an index fossil. For example, here's our timeline again. If trilobites are extinct, and they lived in the time period represented here by yellow, and then they died at the end of that time period and they became extinct, then they can be used as an index fossil. If, however, trilobites are not extinct and they didn't cease to exist at 240 million years ago, then when we, if we find a fossil of a trilobite, then really we can't know when it came from because, as seen in the diagram here, that fossil could have come from any time, from the time trilobites started to exist up until the present day if they are not extinct. So it's very important that the index fossil is extinct, otherwise it can't represent a certain time period because we don't know when that creature may have died or lived if it's not extinct. So how do they determine which period of time an index fossil represents? Well, that is done using the dating methods of cardi cardiometric da I'm sorry, radiometric dating or carbon dating. And as we learned in a previous module, these two particular types of dating methods are very unreliable for objects that are very, very old, more than a few thousand years old. And you'll learn more about that in the biology book for Apologia. Now, as we look at these index fossils, we're going to use a variety of symbols to represent the index fossils that correspond to each layer in the uniformitarianist geological record. And these should look pretty familiar because this is what Dr. Weil used in the book. So we're going to use these symbols to represent the index fossils that correspond to each layer. So here we are back to our layers of rock in the different regions of the world. And we're going to say, for example, that there's an index fossil. I don't know what it is, but some fossil that we're going to represent with the star symbol. And that that index fossil, whenever it is found, it represents rock 
that is that old for the the age of that rock is represented by that index fossil. Then another layer of rock would be represented by another index fossil. And when that fossil is found, it tells us that that layer of rock is that old. Again, our layer three, we're going to represent with a index fossil with the symbol of a square and on and on through our various layers and our index fossils. Now this diagram here that we have just created corresponds exactly to figure 8.1 in your textbook. And let's take a look at that. Now we're going to ignore part of that right now, but these two parts of it are exactly what we have and what we've created here. So let's go back and look at that. Now what the uniformitarianist does is takes these layers of rock and merges or meshes them together by lining up the layers that are the same. Again, remember these layers are from different parts of the world. And lines those up according to the index fossils. Remember, all of this is done based on these index fossils which are allowing him to date the layers of rock. Then once those are lined up, those can be merged together into one big column of layers of rock. Now you'll notice we're missing a six. So the way, uh, the sixth layer of rock. What the uniformitarian is, the way we know we're missing that, is that he would probably, most likely, have another region of the world, which is represented here in figure 8.1. And so now we're going to add that into our figure. So here's our region C, another part of the world, and the geologist or paleontologist would go out and start digging and find the smiley face index fossil and say, hey, this layer of rock lines up with layer 7. And then he would dig a little bit deeper and find an index fossil that wasn't in the column he had already produced. He would dig a little deeper and find an index fossil and say, hey, that one corresponds to layer 5. And therefore, because he's found this layer in between 5 and 7, that tells him that there is an, a layer there, which we're going to call layer 6. So now, oh, this process here of merging these together and lining up these index fossils in order to layer the rocks is just what you did in experiment 8.1. So now, we're going to take this, line these up again, and merge these together like this. Now, the uniformitarianist has used these index fossils to combine these layers from all over the world. And by doing this, he creates the geological column. The geological column is a theoretical picture in which layers of rock from around the world are meshed or merged together into a single unbroken record of the Earth's past. This geological column, according to the uniformitarianist, shows periods of the Earth's past. It shows the fossils that are most common in each layer. There are lots of other fossils, but the ones shown here are what's most common. You need to remember this is theoretical. It is not real. You cannot go anywhere on Earth and find all these layers in one place. Remember, these were merged together from different layers all around the world, and there's no place on Earth that has all of these layers. This is going to be the end of this particular portion of the lecture, and we'll resume this in Part 3.